Hi, this is Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and math advisor for Texas Instruments. And this short video is part of the TI and Focus AP Calculus series. We'll take a look at the TI Inspire and improper integrals. Just a quick reminder, there's two types of improper integrals. What's called type 1 has minus or positive infinity as one of the limits of integration. A type 2 improper integral is going to have an integrand that has a vertical asymptote at some point of integration. To calculate a type 1 improper integral, we'd replace the infinity limit of integration with a placeholder b, calculate that proper integral in terms of b, and then take the limit as b approaches infinity. For a type 2 improper integral, let's say one of our limits is 0, and the function or integrand has a infinite limit at that point. We'll replace 0 with placeholder a, calculate this proper definite integral, and then let a approach 0 from the right. All right, let's look at what the TI Inspire does. Here's a couple of examples where we have math boxes for both a type 1 and a type 2 improper integral. This first one is the integral from 4 to infinity, 1 over x cubed. The second one, type 2, is the integral from 0 to 9, 1 over the square root of x. Both of these converge to a specific numerical value. Now to see why, I'm going to actually replace the infinity symbol on this type 1 improper integral with b, and it actually calculates it in terms of b. And now we can see exactly what's going on. We can see that as b gets larger and larger, this term 1 over 2b squared will approach 0, leaving us with the convergent limit of 1 over 32. Let's look at this type 2 improper integral. Here the offensive limit is that 0, because 1 over the square root of x will be undefined there. So what we're going to do is replace 0 by a, and see what the TI Inspire does with this in terms of a. And again, we can see exactly what's going on. We have 6 minus 2 square root of a, but if we let a approach 0 from the right, that term will just approach 0, leaving us with a convergent limit of 6. Now I'm going to edit these two improper integrals and see a little bit different behavior. So for this type 1 improper integral, I'm going to edit the power on x from 3 to a power that's less than 1. So we're going to look at 1 over x to the 3 fourths, integrate from 4 to b, and now we see a term show up in terms of b. It's 4b to the 1 fourth, and as b gets larger and larger, that term will get larger and larger. That means that the limit of this expression should approach infinity. Let's see what the TI Inspire does with it. I'm going to replace the b back again with an infinity symbol, enter, and we see yes, it, it reports a divergent limit of infinity. Let's look at the type 2 improper integral. Now we have 1 over the square root of x, or 1 over x to the 1 half. I'm going to edit the power on x in the denominator from 1 half to a power that's greater than 1. I'm going to change it to x squared. When we look at this definite proper integral, we see with a involved, we have a 1 over a term show up. But as a approaches 0, that's going to approach infinity. So I'm going to replace a by 0, and sure enough, the TI Inspire shows us the divergence of this improper integral. Both of these examples are sometimes called p integrals. The p re refers to the power on x in the denominator. So these are integrals of the type 1 over x to the p, where p is a power. And there's two kinds of improper integrals. Improper integrals that go to infinity or include 0 as one of the limits. You can see here when the power p is 1, both of these improper integrals diverge. But when I change the power p to a number greater than 1, the type 1 improper integral from 1 to infinity actually converges to a value, while the type 2 improper integral 
still diverges. Now I'm going to change that power down to one that's less than one. Again, for p equal to one, both of them diverge. If we have a power p less than one, notice that the behavior switches. Our type one improper integral diverges, but our type two now converges. Now if you don't have a CAS Inspire, you, can, you still have a numerical integral capability. And I just want to show you how you could explore improper integrals with that numerical integration capability. What I've done here is set up a limit of integration of 10 to the n on one of these numerical integrals, and then 10 to the minus n on the other. Then using this slider for n will allow me to look at numerical values for integrals that include both a limit of integration that's growing very large and one that's getting close to zero. For example, let's uh, set n equal to 1, and I want to set the power equal to 1.6. So I'm going to be looking at the integral of 1 over x to the 1.6 power. I'm going to look at it both over the intervals from 1 to the 10 to the n and 10 to the minus n to 1. As n gets large, I can see that the type 1 improper integral approximations look like they're approaching about 1 and 2 thirds, while the type 2 improper integral approximations are getting very large. And note the warning that's given about the numerical accuracy of these results. Let's look at another improper integral. This one is going to be of type 1. I've gone ahead and set up the proper integral from 1 to b, e to the minus x dx. And it, of course, is involving b, e to the minus 1 minus e to the minus b. Now, as b grows large, we would expect that e to the minus b term to get close to 0. Now, I'm going to replace b by the infinity symbol, and we'll see that the ti inspire will now return the convergent limit of just e to the minus 1, as expected. Now I'm going to edit this integral to look at a kind of very interesting integral. I'm going to edit the power on e from minus x to minus x squared. And I'm going to replace the lower limit of integration with another infinite limit, this one minus infinity. So we're looking at the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared. I'm picking up my infinity symbol from another convenient place. And now let's take a look at this improper integral. Ah, we get that warning symbol again. And again, that warning symbol says we might want to be wary of the numerical accuracy of this result. Now this is an important integral in probability theory, and it's actually known that this integral converges to the square root of pi. So I'm going to insert a math box here and actually get a decimal approximation for the square root of pi and just see how close we got. Now to make it uh, give us a decimal number, I'm going to actually put in 1.0 times pi, take the square root, and hit enter, and see that the result we got is very, very close indeed, even though it gave us that warning symbol. Well, that concludes this short video on improper integrals using the TI Inspire. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.